Greetings YouTube, the Summoner Cutlass decided to do something bold. Let's play this video while we talk. He decided to rank three his six star gambit. How about them apples? And he said, Prof, I'd love to send you some gameplay, but I don't have Apocalypse. And I said, who the hell cares about Apocalypse? I don't want somebody to click on a video and think, well, that, the only reason why that happened was because of Synergy. I want somebody straight out of the bin to know how good the champion is. Now, given this champion is Awakened, so that is a little deceiving. But this is with no Apocalypse, no boosts, and most importantly, when it comes to mastery setup, no suicides. And he has sent over a variety of videos just showing the potential of the newly buffed, my favorite X-Men. You can hear the excitement in my voice, Mr. Gambit. And you can see that he likes to build up to that special too, while also doing considerable damage just with his combo meter. And uh, certainly this, this champion is more fun to use without suicides because you would be taking some pretty bad recoil damage. And like most champions, he does not have regeneration. So, here we go. Doing pretty good work while he builds that special too. And... Uh, Continues to build to that special two where he inflicts 89,000 damage. Ha <laughs> ha! Now that's in the cards for great damage. And if you're like, what? Prof made a pun about Gambit? Who you think this channel is all about? 38,000 damage, 19,000 damage, 80 hits, yes. Not the fastest Winter Soldier KO, but again, this is not boosted. This is with no Apocalypse Synergies, and this certainly is no Suicide Mastery Setup Champ fight. Here's what I ask of Kabam. Don't, you don't have to make like every OP champ trash or every trash champ OP, but just make it to where you get excited to pull them with certain utility and an increase in those beautiful big yellow numbers that can sometimes appear. They've done just that with Gambit. Even after seeing these videos, would I say you should take your six star Gambit to rank two or rank three over Domino or Awakened Omega Red or Sunspot, etc.? No, probably not, but that's not the point. The point is just to look forward to actually taking somebody who might be buried in your roster, either as a five star, four star, or maybe even as a six star, and getting excited about playing around with them. That's what makes me excited to play this game. I do think if you made every bad champion great, two things would happen. You'd lose the ability to really like, I don't know, have that Marvel Casino of Champions experience where there's highs and lows of crystal openings, and I do think that's part of playing the game. But also, for those of you who play Alliance War, which is most of you out there, I would imagine, the better champions become, the harder your paths become. We might say that Iron Package or Inferior Iron Man is uh, somebody that uh, sucks to open fighting him on defense either. Here's Biohazard now. Gambit against Biohazard. You'll notice he's got Ghost and Nick Fury. Omega Red. All right. You'll notice that he is technically bleeding three times, but his flak jacket is protecting him from that bleed damage, allowing him to take on a node like Biohazard that in the old form of Gambit would have probably already KO'd him, and instead he has taken zero damage from the bleeds, and he is healing back in response to it. Beautiful special too, Gambit just coming in with the combo like a total boss, and making Satan's sister Thor Jane Foster, a pretty easy fight. Not that she's a hard fight because she is pretty easy to defeat, but still, it's a quick fight. And Biohazard can make any champion with the wrong counter die. It doesn't matter if you're fighting a terrible defender or not. And yet, Gambit, look at that big pole, <laughs> big baton, big awesome dick. <laughs> Internet phrases. Oh, I know I'm I'm really giddy and you might be wondering why, but I just I have asked for Kabam to make Gambit better since he came out. I was so disappointed when I saw that my favorite MCC champion was just very average at best. 
The best thing I could say about Gambit before this was I liked the stun duration on the special one. But now, just to see the potential of this champion, especially at rank 3 as a 6-star, makes me so very happy that Kabam has taken a champion that we didn't have to exclusively hunt for featured calves or featured Grandmaster Crystals, etc. for 46,000, by the way. 109,000! Well, we've got ourselves a, th a big number. Now we've got Biohazard Bloodletting against everybody's favorite Nightcrawler. Which, with that new Immortal Abomination, if, if he's crawling at night for you, good luck with that. Uh, Alright, so we've got that wonderful node that you can only cause damage from specials. But that should make it even more interesting to have this be a special too. So he's just building up the power, parrying, and then doing a couple of combos so Nightcrawler does not evade. Almost to the special too. Stalls just enough, and we are ready to see what damage this is on this node. 39,000. Was that 91,000? There wasn't a yellow number, so he got kind of unlucky on the crit. Um, but look at the intercepts with Gambit. He is an intercepting master already. Look at this rank 3 6-star interceptor. He evades. I'm so used to playing with suicides where if somebody blocks your special 1, you still lose 5% health. So it's kind of nice to see somebody not be penalized for that. All right, just doing his normal stall and now getting those uh, that heart counter up to 10. I'm sure there's a name for it, but I'm blanking on it. So I'm just going to call it heart counter and sound incredibly ignorant. All right, here we go. Notice how that bleed damage is doing nothing because of that flak jacket support. Normally, if you have flak jacket support in Oklahoma, you're supposed to call the FBI. All right, special two, 145,000? All right, maybe that's the new thumb. Although, you know, it's more about the no, uh, about his uh, ability. But still, you know. All right, we've got Rogue, 40,000 PI. Doesn't matter. He is building up to that special two. I also like champions. You don't have to worry about, like, going to a special three in order to get. And look at that regen, 142 per tick. Wow. So is that... I wonder if that's willpower just doing its thing. Or maybe he does... 352,000? All right. This is one of those rare times where we're just going to go to the end just to see that number again. Can we just... Can we pause it on that? One and two. Dang, I just missed it. And... Boom! I mean, I know the node is a big part of it. But that's a thumbnail nominee if I've ever seen one. Even pausing it with the purple rain coming down. What's up, Prince? Um, okay. Now we have another, like, Sigmund and Rogue to a certain extent. Pretty easy defender. OG Black Panther with the same node. I'm just excited now to see him get to the special two and, do, and then do that crazy damage. Got poison, he's got bleed, but the flak jacket is just allowing him to heal back. 142 per tick ain't bad either. And maybe it's not willpower, since I haven't used the new gamut yet. Maybe that's his own internal ability. And if so, uh, sorry for sounding like an ignorant idiot. But here's a special two. 47,000 damage, 379 again. The Book of Luke trapped in a cage. Thank you again to uh, Mr. Cutlass for all of the videos. He worked really hard on uh, the submission series so that people could really get an idea of whether or not they should take their Gambit to rank 3. And you can see with the right node combination, especially with that BS biohazard uh, combined with the uh, power shield, this is allowing him to be so OP and to finish off these fights, which would normally take even... God tier or beyond God tier champs, I don't know, maybe two, three minutes to last about 45 seconds, maybe even 30 seconds, depending on the counter. All right, Bates, the special one. And as we've said all along in this, it's just get to that special two. Now, you don't want him to be indestructible. He no longer is. So, parry, heavy. And then let's check out that special two. Okay, so pretty unlucky with the yellow number there. Didn't crit at the end. But 10,000 damage, you know, there's worse out there. All right, baiting the special once again. 
Taking a few hits from Luke. No big deal. Building up to the 10 heart charges. As I am sort of ignorantly naming. Special 2 once again after the parry. 72,000 damage that time. With an extra stun was that? Oh, how about them apples? Looks like Luke should have gone to John. The gospel of love. But there's no love in this gospel. Because Luke is still trapped in a cage. Alright, here we go. Special 2. Baiting it. Getting up to those 10 heart card charges. Indestructible, so he's just looking to build his power up at this point to the special 2. Now he's no longer indestructible, so he can maybe parry and then fire that off again. Parry! 31,000. 72,000. With an extra stun. Down for the count. Gam put up. All right, now we have a Black Widow clairvoyant with a special cornered clapback. I know this is a longer than normal video. In fact, it could be two to three times as long as my normal videos by the time this is done. But he, he spent so much time recording these different fights, with these different paths and nodes, that I feel it is only appropriate to not shortchange him by ending this early. Um, obviously you can watch it in sections if you want and come back to it, but I also hear sometimes from people who, for whatever reason, uh, I appreciate it. They like listen to my videos while they drive. It becomes like a podcast. I'm like, what? But you can't see it. <laughs> uh, do you really like my voice enough to just listen to it through your car radio? And then there's some people who are like, prof, the only break I get is when I go to the restroom. So maybe you have a longer than normal restroom break. Thanks to this video. Either way, Cutlass is the real MVP. I'm just voicing it and putting audio over his B-roll, as we say in the industry. Uh, 34,000 on that. Pretty amazing. And notice that his regen with that plus 142 is really uh, gaining his health deck back a pretty good amount, even with this, the health pool of a six-star rank three champion. And he continues to just bait that special one and allow himself to use the bleeds to his advantage with that regen. Got the heavy attack. We know by this point it's all about the special two, a 30,000. Interesting how that first part of the special two is actually higher because he did not get it to crit, but that's okay. He's now got Black Widow Clairvoyant in a corner. 31,000 on that final animation, the special one. Truly incredible. This is just a ton of fun to watch. And uh, again, I'm not saying that you should for sure take your gambit to rank two or rank three. Maybe you also want to wait to have him awakened. But this is making for another argument why if you say you say you take the mutant option for the Abyss Exploration Crystal and you get Gambit, not a bad option. Whereas before, maybe you were thinking, I've got to land on Red Mags, or I've got to land on Domino, or I've got to land on uh, Omega Red. And every time there's a mutant champion that gets buffed, that also increases the value of that class-based nexus. All right, let's skip ahead. Okay, we are finally reached the point to end the videos. Thank you again, Cutlass. Huge shout-outs to everything you did to send this along. I hope I did your videos justice in this commentary. I'm sorry if I uh, misspoke on any uh, ignorance of fights or nodes, but there's a lot to keep track of, and I did not want to uh, stall. There you have it, YouTube. Thanks again so much for uh, for those of you that watched every second of this 14-minute video. It's much longer than usual, but hopefully you agree that it was worth it, especially given the amount of fights and nodes that were highlighted in this crystal opening commentary submission minus the crystal opening plus the commentary.